Hello and welcome to Quit Essentials! Playing a PS2 game through PCSX2 is like putting on a pair of glasses for the first time and you are seeing details all around you in your life that you never saw before. The maintenance you have to save on the third level of Time Splitters 2 go from looking like this to this. When you're walking down the streets in GTA Vice City and you notice a girl in the beginning, you might take a second look at that ass <laughs> just because it might be a little clearer and still pretty low poly. I totally and in the case of Downhill Domination, there is a lot more details and stuff just in the trees and stuff that you, I haven't really noticed before. On the Wild West level on Time Splitters 2, I didn't know the gun had this little decal on it. Like, that was, I never knew that before. The drawback, like for example here, is on Downhill Domination, it is not the easiest games. Like, I've thrown and broken controllers over this game. It's been a pain in the butt to unlock a lot of the characters. Uh, but now you only have just a few that to start with tea bag still my favorite such a it really should be d bag same thing goes when you go to the bike shop you only have three to start with when really there's like 30 my favorite is that you can unlock animals to ride instead of bikes but you know i only have three to pick from right now all the stuff that i've unlocked before on my actual ps2 is not on here and i kind of just don't want to go through and try to unlock all this stuff again how do I get around that? Well, really all you need is um, a PS2. It has to be modded. A memory card that has the saves on it that you're trying to import into PCSX2. And uh, finally you need a jump drive. So first of all, jam your USB stick into your computer. When it pops up there, you wanna make sure that you, if it's not already formatted into a FAT32, quick format works. Give it a minute there. That's all you need to do for now. Eject that. So you insert your memory card that you want to pull the saves from and the dip drive into your PS2. And then you turn on that PS2. You're looking for the U Launch Elf thing. So you're going to launch that. Some USB sticks don't work. Like, for example, this tiny blue thing. I try to use this first. You know, it's formatted as a FAT32. The PS2 just didn't recognize it. So I tried it on a different one and it worked. So you'll eventually get to a menu that looks like this. You press circle for file browser. Memory card, that's your MC0. That's gonna be in port one. Or if you happen to jam your memory card in the port two, it's gonna be MC1. But in my case, it's MC0. Hit circle to enter that. Now, some of these, like, good luck knowing what's what. They're pretty much all saves I wanna keep. So. Uh, this is where it gets tedious. You gotta copy each folder over one by one. So we'll start with the first one. You have it selected. Hit R1. Press circle for copy. <laughs> then you hit triangle to back out and you navigate down to your mass. Hit, and then hit R1 again. And then circle for paste. And I'll sit here and paste. And there you go. And you go through every damn folder and you do this for everyone. And to be honest, I'm not sure if the OPL folder is supposed to be here or not. That might be there as a result of uh, me modifying my PS2. Uh, however, I don't think you need that on your virtual memory card or the PS2 dumper. And with that being done, you can just power off your PS2 and stick the jump drive back into your computer. After you insert your jump drive, you should be able to see all these folders that have basically the same names that you're seeing on the PS2. So we're gonna throw that aside for now. We're gonna launch our PCSX2. Mentally prepare myself to say that. We're gonna go down the config menu, memory cards. You may notice that there's uh, two of them here by default. So I guess if you actually navigate to your, it should be in your documents, uh, PCSX2.1.6 uh, folder, and uh, mem cards folder, you can actually see these are the actual memory cards that you can put into your PS2. And uh, the program lets you add, create as many as you want. Um, you, but they're files. How do you get all these folders cramped inside of a file? Good question. Okay, so I guess when you have one selected, you don't have the option. But you click in a negative space somewhere, and you have the create option. So create, name it, whatever the hell you want. Uh, and you can even choose like what it's going to be. If you want an actual PS1 memory card. I don't know why 
but you could, because I'm pretty sure you can save PS1 games onto a PS2 memory card. But really, it's like the 8 megabyte one, it's just, 8 megs is like a lot for PS2 saves. So after you've named it and created it, you're going to want to insert it. Um, port 1, because why not? What's interesting about it is it's not formatted. You need it to be formatted to convert this into what we need it to do, but you can't format it here. You have to launch it so you can browse over to it and format it inside the PS2 while it's running. So, which I think is odd and weird. Anyway, so if it's not already there, you want to click no disk on your C DVD menu. This will make it so the PS2 thinks there's no disk in it. And then just boot BIOS. Not sure why they don't have that option. Version 1.7 should have that option, I think. Anyway, browser. Navigate to that. Just press your cross on it. I always called it X's kit. Apparently was, I was wrong and ignorant. <laughs> Unformatted. Format now? Yes! Okay. And then shut that back down. Go back to your memory cards. And now we have the convert option. Anyway, so we can convert. That works for me. It just adds converted on the end of the name. And then it says convert this memory card to a folder of individual saves. I believe when you click convert, it just kind of looks like it freezes, but give it a minute. Um, you should, you know, get with the, there it goes. Anyway, so now it's a folder that we can navigate inside of, great. So now we bring up our jump drive with all our saves pulled off of the PS2 from it, and then we're gonna copy it, come back to this one, and we're gonna paste it in there. So it's not the first time I tried this, and the last time I tried this with GTA 3, this happened. So we're just gonna skip that one file. The rest worked okay, so I might have a problem if I want to play GTA 3. So at this point, the memory card is now a folder system stored on your computer. So you can still just leave it as a folder and then insert it as a you know memory card. You don't have to put it back as a file. Although one time when I did do this, it didn't seem like some of the saves carried over or something. It wasn't working correctly. Um, and if that's the case with you, then I would take the folder, click convert, and then convert it back to a .ps2 file and maybe even say convert and convert it just so you know what it's like. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, and at which point you should be able to launch the game that you had a save on. And voila! I can tell already that it worked because there's a Kineticlops right there. Uh, Incog Inc. made another game that was called War of the Titans or something like that, but Kineticlops was a monster in there. Anyway, so they made this game as well, which is why he's featured in here. He's a bonus mystery character that you can select. <laughs> Including the llama, the sheep. Oh, that's it. Okay, I thought there were three animals. No, there's the llama and the sheep and the prototype bike. So all my stuff is here. It's really cool to think that the saves on this card from like 17 years ago when I first got it, are still there and I'm still able to pull them off that card put them on here and uh, play them again but in such a better way in a way that like looks better than it ever did before hopefully uh, that helps somebody I thought it was really cool something I found out and figured out all on my own a little pat on my back for that one I'm hoping there's a way out there that doesn't require a ps2 all you really need is a memory card and uh, one of these this is a Memory card adapter, I believe these were made for the PS3 when it came out. However, when you plug this right into a computer, nothing happens, so you need to find some sort of driver that can run this thing. If I do find a way to use this thing, I will definitely put it in a different video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions about it. Feel free to check out my other videos about this. Um, if I haven't done it yet, I plan to make uh, a couple other videos like how to dump the BIOS. Maybe how to set up PCSX2. I plan on doing one where I, I try to get Guitar Hero to run using an actual Guitar Hero 2 controller. Yeah, maybe a couple other. I don't know. We'll see. With that being said, have a good one.